to do the cabbage rose, I'm going to use a seven millimeter uh, ribbon. This one happens to be over dyed, so it's got some variegation to the ribbon. And I'm going to tie on the same way we've done, just by pushing the ribbon up behind the needle. It's not piercing it. It's the tension of the thread coming through the needle into the fabric, and that's what's holding that ribbon in place. And then when I take my stitch, it secures the ribbon. Go ahead and bury that raw edge. Even though you know that you're gonna cover it up with a flower, uh, it will be more secure to go through the wash. Now I'm gonna use the needle to hold the um, hoop into place while I um, manipulate the ribbon. So I'm doing a, a simple overhand knot just by taking the... And can you see that it kind of looks like a pretzel? So where you want to put your um, stiletto or your laying tool is in the right hand side. If you were to just put it, put your um, stiletto on this left hand side, you're just going to get a knot around your laying tool. So instead, if you will um, find that right hand loop, you'll be able to uh, snug this knot right up to the needle. Now I need a stitch to kind of secure that little knot to the fabric. So that'll take care of this. And I need to be between the needle and the ribbon. So I'm going to walk my needle around to the position. I want a full flip of the ribbon and that's what creates that bias curl. And use your laying tool uh, below your fingertips. If, if you're trying to hold it like a pencil, uh, you may not get close enough, um, but by placing the tool underneath your fingertip, fingertips, you're, you're able to kind of sc scrape this into place. And what I'm looking for is that, that bias. And the first one is awkward because it's such a short, short distance. So it, it doesn't have much definition, but it's going to look better as we go around. One stitch holds it in place. Move ahead. The basically the width of the ribbon. That's how how far I'm going to move ahead in my work. And you want to try to be as close to the previous work as you can get. Now again, you're going to do a full flip of the ribbon. So if this is the right side of the ribbon. By turning it to the wrong side of the ribbon, that's not enough. I need another flip so that I'm full right side again. And then I'm just going to bring the ribbon. I'm looking for that triangle. There's the bias edge at the top. And all I need is one stitch right there in the corner to secure it and move ahead to the next spot. And remember, a full flip of the ribbon gives you that bias curl. I want a little stitch right here to kind of control that. So get up here and get it and then get into position. Full flip of the ribbon gives you the bias. You see the triangle? That's what you're shooting for. Keep your needle as close to the uh, previous petals as you can. 
If you're too far away, you're hunt, you'll have gap in your rows. And you'll see your uh, background fabric. It's not the end of the world, but I think they are prettier when they're full. Now remember, this is not enough just to pull the ribbon over the side. You've got to have that full curl. And I'm kind of easing some of the ribbon out so that it has some definition. Can you see that this might not have much definition if your rose is loopy? So by pulling some of the um, tension, pulling some of the ribbon out, you'll get more definition in your rose. I like a natural uh, fiber for the uh, stiletto. The, the uh, porcupine quill is my favorite, um, but you could use chopsticks or um, the bamboo skewers or something of that nature. Um, the thing about the metal stiletto, you can see you, you're working really close with the needle and if you were to hit it, you're more apt to break a needle. Oops, okay, here's my mistake. I didn't move my needle ahead and I moved my ribbon first. I'm not ready to sew. There's no way I can catch that without flattening all of my previous petals. So I need to wait, move my needle ahead first, and then curl my ribbon into place. Good save. Okay, let's get ready to end this one. I'm going to sew ahead just a slight bit, pull the ribbon on its side, just like you did for some of the earlier stitches, and that gives you the illusion, once again, that it's going through the fabric. I'm going to cut the ribbon close, being careful not to cut your, your needle thread, and bury that. Now we can hide that raw edge with more greenery or at times when I've left enough um, ribbon I can actually drag, now I'm doing this with a hand wheel, I've taken my foot off of the foot pedal, I can actually drag part of the ribbon back over it and hide that little raw edge. I think this one's going to need some greenery though. Lift and snips really come in handy for getting close. And there's your cabbage rose.